Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and this is just a short video inspired by some music listening. I just got home from work and uh, turned on the system upstairs here, and it's been just really, really dead cold, so the amplifier is as cold as it gets. I haven't turned it on for, for about a week or so here upstairs. I'm talking about this little beautiful darling amp. Uh, so it's really, really that common, <laughs> and uh, and I just did a little list music listening, uh, Hani Arani, live from Studio S2, and I just listened to it again, and it has beautiful piano in it, actually three different pianos, a big Steinway, an upright piano, and uh, keyboards, and she's playing on all three. And now, as you see, I don't have the void pipe up here because I moved the pipes down to the downstairs system. So I have my AOs, I call these AO these speakers. And some of you have asked about these speakers, what are those? Well, uh, if you go back to the very start of my YouTube channel, the very first video was on these speakers. So I did a listening test. And that, that test was a, a comparison of this speaker against other speakers. And of course it didn't turn out too well because I made it with my new computer. And the microphone in it and both the camera were just atrocious in quality. So it turned out to be a horrid experience. But I talk a little bit about them and how do they sound downstairs compared to other speakers. And here now just listening to them, listening to, to piano. Uh, I wanted to make this video because it, it, it just had, it was such a profound experience. So I grew up with pianos around me uh, and I mean like big pianos and, uh, and really gorgeous sounding ones and uh, grand pianos mostly. And, uh, and I know really, really intimately how having a piano in your room feels. And it's not, ju not just about sounding. Does it sound like a piano? Can it reproduce a piano? No, a live piano has a, a presence, a resonance, that it lets you know that there is a piano in the room and it's like nothing you can reproduce on stereo. And yet, these unassuming little baby speakers with these outdated paper cone drivers uh, with Alnico magnets made in the probably in the 60s or maybe 50s, 70s, I don't know, there's no date code on them and no nothing by which I can pinpoint exactly when they were made. My guess sometimes between 50s, late 50s to late 70s. That's it. And driven by this Darling amp, which has about maybe uh, less than three watts, maybe about two watts per channel output. And this combination with this unassuming single driver plus that amp, it put uh, a credible Steinway grind piano in my room. And then guys, I'm not kidding. It came with all of those feelings that how does it feel to have a grand piano in the room and not just the sound. And, and it's just something fabulous. Uh, when there's a piano, you, you, you get much more from it than just empty sound. There's, uh, there's the piano coming through. And even though I'm just streaming this stuff from YouTube, from a computer, I'm not even using the deck. You see, the deck is out. Why? Because the poor thing, it's constantly overheating. I put on a copper heat sink on it to cool it down, but I just have to take it out from time to time because it just gets so damn hot. That's a bad point with this design. They just get hot and, and after a while it doesn't even function. So I have to take it out wait a week or two and then it's ready to go again. I think there are some capacitors, there's some things inside that are ready to go, but if I let it reform after the stress, hey, what's going on? Then, then it can heal again. 
Anyway, even without that, just the direct headphone out experience from a plain YouTube video, which is like a 256K MP3 basically, it reproduced that experience that I have from live grand pianos. And uh, yeah, so, so that's it. And, uh, and I think that uh, there's always uh, many discussions and comments about uh, Alnico drivers, Alnico speakers, and, uh, and then they can do it. They can do it. And then there's like uh, technicalities that, uh, that are for them or against them. Technicality against it is that the Alnicos uh, don't have a high coercivity. So uh, it, it means that, that the Alnico magnets are susceptible for demagnetization. So when, when there is magnetic field is generated by the voice call, it weakens the, mag the, the Alnico magnet and then they recover. But, but they are not so resilient against the magnetic field of the coil that's working inside. But, and then supposedly that, that's supposed to create a problem because it's supposed to smear the sound, right? That's what the mind tells, that's what we know, what we know about electronics tells us. But I be damned because it's the exact effing opposite that I experience now and not just now, but from time to time again and again and again is that this bloody technology can re reproduce with this tiny baby speaker, 6x9 over a driver. It's really a nobody. It doesn't even have any cone excursion, maybe like uh, two millimeters, nothing. Driven by a puny water two or three. And it put a bloody effing grand piano in my bloody room. And, and this is something that, that uh, it's, it's just not happening. When I go to audio showrooms, I hear it all the time that the, the, that the sonic carbon copy is there, that it, it kind of gives you a credible illusion of the grand piano, but it doesn't feel at all anything like a real grand piano. I have no feeling like that. And even if I close my eyes, I can see the outlines of the piano, but but the sound is nothing like the one that's coming from the grand piano. And that's what all the audiophiles will tell you, that uh, uh, you cannot reproduce a grand piano sound because <laughs> it's, it's nothing like whatever comes out of your stereo. And still, that's true. You can hit like a thousand watt or a five thousand watt uh, solid state amp with, with the fanciest uh, million dollar uh, high current speakers give you the image of the grand piano, give you lots of things, but eh, you know that it's not a piano if you intimately know the sound of the piano. You know that piano has a substance, that harmonic density. It has a life. To me, these music instruments, they, they have life. It's a living being connecting you to the world of music. And when we have our uh, hoity-toity, mainstream uh, stereo gear, it gives us an illusion, yeah, but it does not put that living soul in the room. And, and that's what just happened with this uh, totally unassuming little combination. And guys, in this amp, I have the budget Hammond 125 ESE output transformers. They shouldn't be anything special. They, they were like $65 a pop when I bought them 20 years ago. Of course, I tweaked them a lot, so they, they perform at a little bit higher level, but I am still bound by the amount of inductance that this has, which is not much. So technically, the base, the low end, should be totally unassuming coming from here. And yet, I had a totally real grand piano experience and uh, let's see so i have this app that i, I showed last time when i uh, recorded at the orchestra i used my my cell phone and i i put that app on the pad as well and the pad actually there's a kind of a big mismatch between the phone and the pad 
that the pad measures 18 dB more than what the phone measures and uh, so so it's when when we read when I read the results I just take off 18 dB from what I read so here the scale says like it goes here to the top line is between 100 and 120 dB so we need to knock off 18 dB so basically the music was getting close to 100 dB it was like 98 99 dB peaks here and look even down to the 25 hertz mark which is the lowest line there was still quite a bit of energy coming through and uh, and and you would think that why is there such low frequencies now I'm just talking and it's showing like 25 hertz and yeah actually I feel that that's me and the room interacting as you see like the majority of the energy is right here in the 100 hertz 120 hertz through the what what's that 500 hertz range oh it's 